Um, I just want to throw this into the ether of the internet. Because I was just thinking about this. I just want to make some videos about um, what's on my mind. Because sometimes I think about things that maybe... Uh, I don't know. I find are interesting. And I was wondering, like, how many people... Like, how many people would there have to be sick of the coronavirus before I knew somebody that was sick? And I, this got me thinking because people were saying, well, do you know anybody that's actually died of the flu? And it's like, no, not that I can think of. I mean, how many people that I, do I know that have died? But how many people have died of the flu? I can't think of anybody. I know it happens. How many people do I know that have had the flu? Lots of people. I've known many people over the course of my life that have had the flu. I've had the flu. Um, so it makes you wonder, like, you could theoretically gauge on an anecdotal level how many people have the flu based on how, or how many people have the coronavirus based on um, the people you know. And this is saying 600 people you know, which I think is... Yeah, you might know 600 people, but how many of those people do you interact with on a daily basis? Um, but let's just do quick calculation here. Um, so there's 330 million Americans. 330 million. And let's say you know, uh, so you know 600 people. So that means 1 in 550,000 Americans you know personally. Um, so that's how many cases there would have to be before you knew somebody with the coronavirus. So once there's 550,000 people have it, you're going to, the chances are that you're going to know one of those people. How many people would have to die? There'd have to be 550,000 people would have to die before you knew one person that had it. That's assuming the 600 number. Um, so maybe that's like your Facebook friends, you know, just, or as a group, I don't know. Um, how many people do you interact with on a daily basis? I mean, I think of like maybe 20 to, th or let's say at a weekly or monthly basis. So I know maybe 20 or 30 coworkers at work pretty well. Um, maybe 50 more, I barely know their names. Um, how many people, you know, you got church, you got friends, you got family. How many of those people do you t talk with on a you know, decent basis, maybe 150 people, maybe 100. So let's just try 150 people. 330 million Americans divided by 150. So that means there'd be, there had to be 200, 2.2 million people would have to have the virus before you knew someone that had it. It's interesting. So right now there's only like 80 or 90,000 people in China with it, but there'd have to be 2.2 million in America before you knew someone with it. Um, or, on the other side, how, how many people would have to die of it before you knew someone that died of it? It'd be 2.2 million would have to die. And let's, let's go even less. Uh, so some of us maybe only interact with 100. You could probably go down to 50. I don't know. Imagine if you work from home, maybe you only interact with family and a couple of friends, but um, say 100, so 3.3 .3 million people would have to die before you knew somebody. Let's say the guy that works at home and doesn't really talk with a lot of people. 6.6 6 million people would have to die before you knew someone. I mean, I don't know how many people live in like Los Angeles or New York. Let's Let's find out. the biggest city in America. So, like, if you're that guy that didn't n interact with a ton of people, literally the whole city of New York would have to fall off the face of the earth before you knew somebody that had it. It's not saying that's not a big deal or anything. I'm just saying um, that the, the argument that people are using that, like, oh, uh, you know, the flu's not a big deal um, because you don't really know anybody that's died of it. Um, well, this is way more deadly, so in my opinion, it's going to have a 
biggest factor. And I have reasons. I think I might make a couple of videos because um, there are some reasons that maybe other people aren't thinking of that's going to make this a bigger deal. And I work in a hospital. Um, and I've seen where we get to... Sometimes in the hospital it gets so busy from the flu season that you're actually not able to do your job well. That literally um, it gets to the point where some people could theoretically lose their license, that they're not giving proper patient care because of how busy it gets. And that's the flu. Imagine if you had the flu on top of the coronavirus. The system is, is already at a point where it's, at, you know, where it's stretched to the max. And it can hit a breaking point way easier than people think. Because the way the hospitals are in it to make money. And so they're going to hire as few people and have, have as few people there as possible. Cause, and it, that's, a, that's a whole other story. But it, it's just like any other business where they only have as many employees as they need to make a profit or to or to succeed, you know, Get, don't even talk about the money part of it. Just they're only going to ha have as many people working as is necessary. It's just standard. I mean, it doesn't matter if, even if you lived in um, Stalinist Russia or whatever. It's not there's no money involved. You you want to allocate resources as best as possible that you're not going to have too many people just sitting around, you know. I mean, that that's always the best thing. Um, but because when you have surges like the flu, even and that's predicted, I mean, people know that that's going to happen. And even then, um, you get an overwhelmed system. So if you have 20 times as many people being admitted to the hospital than the flu, you know, you, you can create a whole issue. And I'll, I'll make some more videos on that because... I have a, I've been working at a hospital for four years, and I'm a respiratory therapist, so I know some things that probably other people don't know, but that's it.